Well, welcome to uh, this evening's broadcast and conversation, uh, Let's Talk. And tonight we are going to be talking about the Lord's Supper. Uh, we have a number of, uh, of uh, pastors in on the conversation. Uh, Tommy, Teppel, myself, Sammy, and uh, Michael, they're going to introduce themselves shortly. Um, but even before they do, let's just open in a brief word of prayer. Can I pray? Let's bow our heads. Yeah. Father God in heaven, even as we talk, we ask that we'd be guided into truth by your word and that we'd be guarded from error by your spirit and that you would be glorified in all that we say and do. And this we ask in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. 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 Well, guys, uh, I'm going to ask you just to introduce yourselves. Uh, maybe let's go in a circle, starting with uh, Tommy, Teppel, Sammy, and then Michael. So, Tommy, if you can kick us off. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tommy Fonervolt. Uh, I am a member of Brackenhurst Baptist Church in the southern part of Johannesburg, and I'm uh, the executive director of Imprint. Uh, it's a ministry that uh, serves church leaders, uh, providing them with resources and with training. And I've been doing that for about two years now. So, And Tommy, you've also done, you know, book distribution through the organization to Crystal Park Baptist Church. Uh, so we are indebted to you for the way that you've provided us with resources in the past. Thank you very much, Pat. Uh, Teppel, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? And uh, let's hope that Sammy gets back on the call. Okay. Um, Teppo from Crystal Park Baptist Church, and I'm a pastoral assistant. I work with Mark, and yeah, I help him with everything. <laughs> I'm married to Lerato, and yeah, well, it's just about two years now. Yeah, thanks, bud. Uh, oh, let me just introduce myself. Uh, I'm Mark Penrith. I'm a pastor, uh, together with a number of other elders at Crystal Park Baptist Church uh, in Benoni. Uh, Sammy, would you introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Sammy Libello. Um, I'm a pastor at Melezani Baptist Church in Soweto. Cool. Great to have you on the call, bud. And uh, lastly, Michael. I'm Michael. I'm a pastor at Springs Baptist Church in the East Strand of Kauteng. Cool. And, and just for anybody who might be watching this today, let me just put in the caveat. All of us are obviously at home. We're under lockdown just like you are. And so our kids are underfoot. And so if you hear screaming from the back, it might be a discipline issue or whatever it might be. Um, don't be uh, terribly offended if the uh, production quality isn't quite uh, studio. Um, but we are doing whatever we can in order to uh, get information out to the church and to our churches at this time. So today we're going to be talking about the Lord's Supper, uh, communion. Uh, and we're going to be talking about how that works in the context of our local churches. And I think it will be a good idea, guys, to just start off by, by setting the topic uh, in Scripture, setting the topic in Scripture. And so whoever would like to start, uh, let's just start to talk about a little bit of a biblical theology uh, of the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think uh, one, one of the Scripture verses that uh, people neglect to look at because um, they normally look at maybe 1 Corinthians 11 and then the gospel says uh, 1 Corinthians 10 uh, verses 14 to 22 um, and where Paul uh, reminds the, the, the believers that um, it's wrong to sacrifice to idols um, and they should flee from idolatry uh, and to support his argument Paul then refers to the Lord's Supper uh, where he says in verse 16 and 17 where he says the cup of blessing that we give thanks for is not uh, is it not for sharing in the blood of christ and then he refers to the bread as well he says the bread that we break is not a sharing in the body of christ uh, because there is one bread we who are many are one body for all of us mm. share that one bread um, and again, Paul's main point is um, that when we participate in the Lord's Supper, we share together in the benefits of Christ's death. Uh, and because we have fellowship with Christ, we have fellowship with one another. Uh, and that's, for me, that's one of the big things of, of the Lord's Supper. And at the Lord's Supper, we keep company with Christ. And because of Christ, we keep company with, with one another. So it's, it's more mm -hmm. like 
baptism binds one to many, and the Lord's Supper binds many to one, which is Christ. Um, I think that's one scripture baptism that always binds one to many, and the Lord's Supper binds many to one. Now, I've heard that before, but that is just such a great quote. I, I'm going to be putting it on Facebook straight after we finish the record here. Um, but, but the idea of baptism, one person being baptized, being joined to many in the church, communion, yeah. many people taking communion, really being bound into one body under the person of Christ. Love it, yeah. Tommy. Thanks for that. Uh, thanks for that intro. Yeah. Guys, uh, other scriptures which come to mind? Yeah, I think 1 Corinthians 10 places well the participation in the blood of Christ and the participation in the body of Christ, where 1 Corinthians 11 talks about participation with the body of Christ. Mm. I think that's mm. wow. really well put so, together. Hang on, just, just draw out that distinction a little bit, Michael. So, again, the, the, the bond to Christ symbolizing the participation in his blood and the, the remembrance that we have partaken uh, in his sacrifice. But now in 1 Corinthians 11, participating with the rest of those who have participated in Christ. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Sammy, anything to add in terms of uh, scripture references? I don't know. Temple. <laughs> oh, okay, so, uh, look, I would also just point back, just like we get the, uh, the full ambient of, uh, of biblical theology in our discussion, I'd point back to mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 12, uh, where we've yeah, got yeah. The, uh, the Passover, uh, and just that imagery of people being indoors. Wow, we've got a little bit of a metaphor for what's going on now, um, but we'll discuss that later. And um, people being indoors, people being saved, and uh, the angel of the Lord passing over um, folk. And at that moment, uh, a Passover meal taking place, which included a, uh, a sacrificial lamb, included unleavened bread. And obviously on the night in which Jesus Christ was betrayed, uh, we have that picture. Jesus Christ uses that picture, those elements, uh, in order to institute a a new uh, a new rite, a, a new sacrament, a new ordinance uh, that he gives to his church in order to remember his death uh, for sins. Great stuff, yeah, guys. I, well, I think. Yeah, sure. Mark, just on that, on in Exodus, it it goes. Just like it's the the what, so the the what that they had to pay partake of, uh, the how, and then also the who and the when. So it all refers back to First Corinthians ten and eleven as well. Um, who can partake? What should be served at the communion? Um, and and uh, where they should partake it, and who can join into the uh, participation, and then how they should do it. So yeah. Well, Tommy, let, let's actually now get practical. Who can participate in communion? Well, if you read the Gospels uh, and, as Michael said, 1 Corinthians 11 and, and what I started with, 1 Corinthians 10, um, I believe that it can only be baptized uh, members of a church um, that can partake in the Lord's Supper. And it's just because that clarifies the who. So if, if you partake in remembrance of Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 11, um, why would you want to partake and remember what he has done for you if you haven't identified with what he has done for you? So, okay. baptized anybody else members. Want to pick anything, anybody else want to pick that up and, uh, and, and, uh, and add to that? Okay. Um, so, so just two points on um, 1 Corinthians 11 also. So there's, there's, a, there's a spiritual act, right, which, which then just limits believers to this, which is what, what has been um, spoken of, which is us identifying with Christ. And so there's also a mental act because he says, do this in remembrance of me. So there are things that we should be remembering about Christ and his saving work. So it's not, it's not just a, a thing that we partake of. And the third thing that um, Michael mentioned is um, the coming together. When you read 1 Corinthians 11, it talks about, uh, it's about five times where he says, when you come together, when you come together. So that's the church gathered there. And so 
that also talks to our time um, as to can people partake of communion in their households or not? And the answer is no. So yeah. 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 Uh, look at Crystal Park. We will fence the table each Sunday. So each Sunday, we, we whoever is leading communion, and you know, I mean that might be a topic of conversation. Who gets to lead communion? Uh, we practice the priesthood of all believers. So we have a designated men in the church who who lead the communion. Uh, meal, uh, Safiso and Jake in our context, um, but they will fence the table uh, each Sunday by saying something to the effect of, uh, the table is open to all who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, but then we won't stop there. We will also add, and are in good standing with their local church. In other words, mm-hmm. if you're visiting our church, you're welcome to take communion. Um, but you need to be in good standing with the church that you are a member of. Um, and then we will also add a caveat, a caution to parents to say, uh, if you are the parents of uh, young children or unbelieving children, please exercise authority uh, over your own household. Um, anybody else do something similar to that during your communion message? Yes. Yeah. Okay, is that pretty common? Do you add anything else, Michael? Well, how, how do you guys do communion, Michael? What what does communion look like at Springs? And then uh, Sammy and then Tommy. Yeah, yeah, so we do communion on the first and the third Sunday of every month. It's kind of a, the Baptist tradition that we've inherited. Um, and uh, we'll always do it at the end of the sermon so we can give time for people to uh, give uh, necessary uh, consideration to uh, thoughts to participating in the service. It's not an add-on at all. It's always incorporated in terms from the beginning. We, we want to emphasize and we do uh, encourage our members, you know, that this is the Sunday that we're going to be uh, partaking in the Lord's Supper. Uh, it is the wonderful opportunity to keep short account with the body of Christ as, as well. So, yeah, we do it at the end. Um, and, yeah, it's just that visual, uh, tangible uh, remembrance of Christ. Closed table or open table? Uh, I mean, only members, or uh, do you have an open table to believers generally? No, exactly what you said, just to uh, fence it off with uh, uh, whoever is has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and is in good standing with their local church. Okay, great stuff. Sammy, brother, how do you guys do communion at Molitsani Baptist Church? <laughs> is Sammy frozen? <laughs> Sammy, are you with us, brother? I think he has a data problem. Tommy, let's switch to you, mate. Yeah, the the way we do it at Bracken is, is uh, we partake every Sunday, except the last Sunday of the month, which is we open up for, for testimonies. So we, we partake about three times a month. Uh, we just see it as a means of grace. So we want to partake as many times as we as we can as a body together. Um, we also do the same. We fence the table uh, and we put a big emphasis on that uh, because of misunderstandings of the Lord's Supper. Uh, we say pretty much the same as you guys. Uh, it's normally an elder or elder candidate that will lead the table. And we just convinced about um, the Lord's Supper is the visible word of God. So, um, and in 1 Timothy 3, 2 and Titus 1, 9, it, it talks about the the, the minister's ministering the, the word. So it's normally an elder that, that um, serves the Lord's table. Um, yes. And then, uh, yeah, so we fence the table and we've got a, and this is a maybe too technical, but it's a, a close com- a, a table. So it's not yeah. closed, just for members. It. Uh, and it's not open just for any Christian, but it's close, close. So if you are a member of a church in right standing, like you said, you can partake. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Love it. Sammy, brother, we, you, we dropped the call as I asked you the question. How do you guys do communion at okay. Molitsani Baptist Church? Yeah, we, we, have an, uh, we do it once a month, um, the first um, Sunday of the month, and we have an open um, table. Um, we do emphasize that it's open to... Um, believers who are 
members of their local church in a good standing and from the sister church as well, meaning um, the same gospel you would hear here, it will be this, uh, the gospel you would hear here, it will be the same as what you hear from your own church. So we try to um, emphasize that um, it, communion is also um, shows that we are his disciples, we belong to him, and a, a, a remembrance of what he has done for us. So, um, so we clearly want to communicate that it has to be Christians who are um, really committed to the local church um, formally. Um, they are members of their own local church. And mm -hmm. as well as for children, we used to ask the parents to exercise oversight over their children. But then we decided that why do elders exercise that kind of authority um, the oversight of the spiritual ministry, but then have to let the parents um, decide on their children. So we, we decided that if parents um, want their children to start partaking in communion, um, they would have to communicate to us uh, first and as well as um, children who are not part of, who don't have parents with us, teenagers who don't have uh, parents in our church, they would need to communicate with us. Um, so, yeah, um, I think that's what we currently are doing uh, with regard to um, communion. So what I'm, what I'm picking up from Brackenish Baptist, Springs Baptist, and Molotani Baptist is really a, a very high view of what communion is and who gets to participate. Um, Tepo, I'm, I'm keen to hear if you've got anything to add in terms of how Crystal Park does things. Um, anything to add to what has already been said? Yeah, so it's it's pretty much the same. So it's it's what you said, uh, which is it's fenced off. Um, but then again, yeah, I think I think the most important thing is that we don't exclude people who've identified with Christ. Um, so if anyone is in Christ, they, it's like an open table to them, especially if they're in right standing with the local church. Um, uh, so the elements itself, so we, we, I don't think we've spoken about that. So, mm. uh, so in, in the Gospels, uh, Christ says it's the fruit of the vine. And so people will have discussions on what is it? Is it supposed to be wine? Is it supposed to be grapefruit? I mean, I don't think any is 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 like um, like a, a hard stance to say. Like in the Bible, there's a hard stance to say this is wine or this is grape juice or whatever. It's just the fruit of the vine. And so, what's important is the action. And obviously, the unleavened bread is clear for us there. So yeah. Okay. So what and we do? No, you actually, you you you. Yeah. You bring up um, this truth in, in terms of interpretation and, and different people interpreting different things in terms of the elements. Uh, I noticed Brackenhurst does communion three times a month. Springs does communion twice a month. Molotsani does communion once a month. The reality, though, is that we are all following the biblical precept, which says, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, yeah a little bit of a difference in terms of application there. Hmm. Guys, um, obviously South Africa is under lockdown at the moment. Um, all of us are confined to our homes except for brave folk going out fighting the virus and taking care of critical services uh, in our country. Uh, so we do want to acknowledge them. Um, but, but in reality, this Sunday, we're not going to be having church. Uh, churches are not gathering. Uh, we are not assembling. Uh, we are not getting together. Um, and so mm. uh, just a very practical question. Can communion be taken in this crazy interim period? Uh, yes or no? And I haven't actually prepped you guys, although I think I know what you're going to say. But, but, but I'm really interested to hear what you do say and what your motivation is for whatever you do say. Let's start with Tommy, Michael, Sammy, Seppo, and then we'll close off. Yeah, I think what you've read at the beginning, Exodus 12, and what we've said, 1 Corinthians 10 and 11, clearly points to uh, God, first of all, in, in Exodus 12, 1 to 8, identifies a people for, to himself. So uh, it's a gathered group. 
Um, as I said, uh, baptism bringing one into many and then many into one, um, that, that's a real important thing that it's a group of people, it's a God's people gathering together. And even in 1 Corinthians 11, he says, wait for one another. So it means we need to wait until we gather, until we partake. Hey, Tommy, can I just push back? Exodus, wasn't that families together in a household? Yeah, can I they didn't have one meeting place. <laughs> okay, okay. No, I just, just, just want to make sure that we driven by the text. Um, anything but to add, after, after, after they were baptized in the Red Sea, they became one, one group of people. Just a little bit of biblical theology. I, and you're right. I mean, when they celebrated the Passover thereafter, um, were they celebrating as a nation, as a mm. national identity in terms of what God was saying? Well, I think I'll have to go back and check out the text. Michael, brother, you look yeah. like you're ready to go. <laughs> well, I think one of the things you have distinguished between the church and the home, uh, at the end of it is uh, when you come to get eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, you can eat at home. So yes. the distinction drawn between home and church, and home is not church, and communion is not a stand given body of Christ uh, that we live out our Christian life with. And so, yeah, it is. so that is that's the argument. And um, right now, your your speaker was going in and out, so I just want to repeat it because I think it is so important just to underline what you said. Um, as we're looking at one Corinthians chapter eleven a distinction is drawn between eating at home and sharing communion with the gathered saints. Uh, and so there we do have a biblical mandate for having communion, not in our own households, but rather in the assembly, the ecclesia, the gathering, the church. Mm. Uh, Sammy, anything to add there in terms of the question, brother? I think you've got a sound problem, buddy. Sound. Um, so I actually agree with Michael that home doesn't really, um, in a sense, like a, a family, just a, a single family. Um, gathering doesn't constitute um, as a church. As, and so I think like we cannot separate, we cannot really um, say, family gathering would be the same as an assembly of the saints of the local church on the Lord's day um, for the purpose of worship. So in that sense, I would say for the family um, to partake, like for the, for the church to partake um, on like um, communion, there would have to be, if ever like for us, we may do it, it would have to be like, um, families from the church, maybe three, four families gathering together, but not just a single family, because I think at, again, there's like the church gathered in, in the homes um, in the early stages where there's like in the home of this person, in the home from this person. So, so yeah, there's that element of homes has been like a location for 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 gathering of believers yes. but then yes. i think it's when it's just used as a location not as not as just a family so yes. if okay. if we were allowed to meet in a family in a, in a, in someone's home um like uh, that's fine it's just a matter of location but i think the emphasis there would be on the uh, the gathering of, of um, the assembly of the saints of the local church on on the lord's day so, so guys, I'm actually, I'm completely with you. And, and I, would, I would say for all the reasons that you've given, we shouldn't have communion in Bible studies. We shouldn't have communion in youth groups. Uh, we shouldn't have communion on youth camps. We should have communion when the church gathers, when it assembles, uh, when we are together. But, but let me ask a tricky question that you are not prepared for. Um, Michael, I'm going to shoot this at you. And then, Tepo, it'll give you a little bit of time to think. Um, we're gathering on Facebook. Everyone's together. What's stopping the, the pastor saying the words, taking the elements, and everybody in their own locations, wherever they are, um, taking communion together? What might be wrong about that? Does anything come to mind? 
Well, we, we're told not to forsake the gathering of the saints, that we would discourage one another, that we would encourage one another as long as we get together. And I even said to my church, uh, pray for me, because to preach to screen, it lacks encouragement that you speak to my congregation. Um, it's not the saints. It, this is, you know, oh, the present statement is not church. And our long for church would be a longing to be able to partake once again in a worthy manner uh, at the Lord's yes. table. Yeah, powerful. Yeah. Uh, Tepo, anything to add to what Michael said? So, I, I, I don't see this as a gathering, <laughs> so to begin with, right? Um, so, so when, you, when, when, we, when we look at the text, um, like when you, when you look at Acts, when, when communion was, 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 was uh, participated in, you, you see people come together and the apostles are there and they, they, they go on with communion. And so there's, 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 there's a sense of same location with people who've identified with one another. And then again, we see with, um, with the same text that we've been looking at, 1 Corinthians 11. It says, when you come together, wait for one another. So there are specific people in mind that belong to a specific local body of the church, of, of that specific region or wherever they, they met. So, so this here is not communion. This is, this is just something else, yeah. I mean, we can't. I guess we can't, they, a lot could be said that a church is more than than just the service. You know, being being the church includes um, the one another. You know, the ability to love one another and share with one another and bear one another's burdens and uh, encourage one another. And uh, all of these things are lacking uh, in this kind of digital format um, to one degree or another. I, I got to tell you, I'm looking so forward to three weeks' time when the church does get together, <laughs> when I get to hug Auntie Molly and where I get to hear Sir Fiso, um talking about the Lord's death and his resurrection and this call to enjoy communion together. Guys, we, we need to close because uh, our time is running short. Um, but in closing, and you've literally got 30 seconds, is there anything that you want to add to the conversation, uh, Tommy? Yeah, I'd like to, uh, we've been talking about um, the corporate gathering, um, but as we gather corporately, there is an individual aspect to the meal as well. I'm partaking in the meal as well. Um, and I always remind people, even though we, we help one another and um, we inspect one another and help one another with our accountability around the Lord's table, there's an individual aspect to it as well. And I remind them to, to look around, to say this is the body that we are partaking with, uh, look back at what Christ did for us, uh, look inward to yourself and reflect on your own sinfulness, uh, look up uh, to Christ and look ahead for his second coming. So that's a, always a, a good thing to remind ourselves of as we partake. Um, so individually, look around, look back, look inward, look up and look ahead. So, Man, yeah. that is Excellent, Tommy. Thanks for adding that. Michael, anything to add? 30 seconds, brother. Yeah, just uh, as often as we partake of this free death of our Jesus Christ until he comes. Sammy, uh, any final closing words? Yeah, I would think like if ever um, we are to think that we can partake in communion um, online. We have to think of um, baptism as well. Can we also do that online? So if we can be consistent, um, then... Uh... Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Sammy. I think you're, I think you're frozen again. Uh, Tepo, uh, last words from you, brother. Yeah, so um, just like baptism, um, that's just an ordinance. Uh, so communion does not save us, right? Just like baptism does not save anybody. So you have to have a personal relationship with Christ. And so you do that um, in, in obedience to him. And obviously to reflect on you, it's, it's a means of grace, basically. Um, yeah, so it's, it's not just uh, uh, like something that would open up the gates of heaven for anybody who partakes in it. So it's just for believers who are looking for 
who are looking towards the coming of their Savior. Mm. Thank you so much, Temple. Look, guys, we've, we've come to the end of, uh, of our time. I, I want to close us in a word of prayer. I ask that the Lord will entrust everything that we've spoken into the hearts and the minds of whoever might have heard. Uh, let's bow and just close in a word of prayer. Father God in heaven, I do thank you for your word. I thank you that you have left us with your guidance, uh, with your plan, uh, with your intention for how your church is to operate and act in this world. Uh, and I thank you, Lord, that you are clear, uh, that, uh, that, Lord God, we can read your word, we can take you at your word, uh, and we can act according to your word, knowing that we are worshipping you in spirit and in truth as we go about it. Lord God, I, I do pray um, for many pastors all over our country uh, who will be um, comforting sheep tomorrow uh, mm. in formats that we are not used to. Um, I, I ask, Father God, that you give us much wisdom and understanding as we take your word, uh, as we make observations and interpretations from it, and then, Lord God, as we apply your word into the lives of believers uh, that are at home and sometimes might be in fear, other times, Lord God, might have time to dwell and to think upon, upon things. I, I pray, Lord God, that you would use this time uh, for a spiritual awakening within our country, South Africa. And this I ask in the wonderful name of mm. Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen.